In some cases, people who stop disease-modifying therapy can get worse, sometimes much, much worse, a phenomenon known as rebound disease activity. This is known to occur with certain medications that entrap or sequester lymphocytes, a subclass of white blood cells involved in inflammation and MS, but do not destroy those cells, such as Tysabri and Gelenia. In this video, we're going to take a look at what rebound is, the risk factors. I'll show you some examples with MRI scans. We'll look at the prognosis based on observational data and potential treatments. Remember what Einstein said, any fool can know. The point is to understand. So in general, a rebound is a severe multiple sclerosis relapse which occurs after stopping disease-modifying therapy. In particular, these drugs I call immunosequestrants. In other words, they sequester immune cells but do not destroy them. For example, the drug Tysabri works by preventing the entry of lymphocytes into the central nervous system, into the brain, spinal cord, and optic nerve. It doesn't kill those cells, they're still circulating in your blood, in your lymph nodes, in your bone marrow, and hence if you stop the drug, these autoreactive lymphocytes can then rush into your brain and spinal cord and cause inflammation. And the half-life of Tysabri is only about 11 days, but they bind very tightly to lymphocytes, and hence the effect of the drug is quite prolonged, and this rebound can occur months later. The same thing with these S1P receptor modulators, such as Gelenia, Mazent, and Symposia, these drugs drugs block the exit of lymphocytes from the lymph nodes, hence preventing them from getting into your nervous system. But again, if you stop the drug, the cells are unchanged. They still have this tendency to attack the nervous system, at least a very small percentage of your lymphocytes, and hence they can go and attack. This doesn't happen in everyone, just in some people. This phenomenon has also rarely been reported with other medications such as Tecfidera, but very uncommon. But in Importantly, it's not thought to occur with medications that destroy lymphocytes, such as B cell depleters, rituximab, ocrevus, or casimta, or with Lemtrada, or with conditioning regimens, including hematopoietic stem cell plant transplant. Please talk to your own provider for medical advice. My name is Brandon Bieber. I make videos about MS every Wednesday. So why do people stop their therapy in the first place, leading to a rebound? Well, they could be having side effects of the medications, so they have to stop. With Tysabri, some people were originally JC virus antibody negative, but they then turned positive. And this is the blood test that determines the risk of infection by the JC virus, PML, or progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. So people are afraid of PML, and so they stop the medication. Generally speaking, we wouldn't recommend that. We would recommend going to a new medication immediately and doing an MRI scan in between. Some people are just doing well. They don't want to take medications. They want to go natural and they stop their medication unaware of the possibility of a rebound attack. Often it's not their fault. People just lose health insurance. They fall upon hard times. They can't continue to get the medication. In the United States, you can get health insurance through your parents if you're age 25 or younger, but I've seen some age 26 victims, some people who they turn 26 and they lose health insurance and maybe they don't have a job that provides it or they're unemployed. And yes, there are some ways around it, like applying for emergency Medi-Cal, but in certain states it could be very difficult. Sometimes just the cost, there could be very expensive co-pays for some of these medications. And sometimes people move. They change locations. For instance, I'm a Southern California doctor. I only have credentials for infusion centers in Southern California. I really can't help you if you move to Northern California or to another state. You have to get a new neurologist. And if you don't get someone fast enough, you could have a rebound attack. Another thing is unplanned pregnancy. So Gelenia is considered to be unsafe in pregnancy. Tysabri is not so well studied in pregnancy. See and uh, some people would stop the medication due to pregnancy, due to fear of harming the fetus, and later on they could have a rebound attack during pregnancy, which can be a disaster. For Tysabri, some doctors have advocated actually continuing Tysabri just due to fear of rebound relapse. And there is some observational data on Tysabri in pregnancy. This is a controversial topic. Definitely talk to your own provider. Now we move to the risk of rebound relapses. So with Tysabri, 
Aubrey, as I said, the drug half-life is fairly short, about 11 days, but it binds the lymphocytes quite tightly, and so rebound tends to be delayed and often happens about four to six months after stopping the drug. So if you miss one dose, if you're doing it every 28 days and you do it two months after the last dose, the risk is very low, but if you wait up to four months, the risk is much greater. With Gelenia, it tends to be a little bit faster, happening about two to four months after stopping the drug. Now, the absolute risk of rebound is greatest with the drug Tysabri. This is the drug most well known to cause rebound. And in one case series of 32 people with MS, the risk was 38%, very high, and consider that a lot of these relapses can be quite severe, even devastating. With Gelenia, it's lower in follow-up studies after the randomized trials, Freedoms and Freedoms 2. These are people who didn't continue on the drug after the trial. The risk was 3.5 to 8.3%. And in a different single center observational study, the risk was 10.3%. Now that seems low, but keep in mind some of these relapses can be quite severe. And what are the risk factors for rebound in general in terms of you? Well, younger people have a higher risk. People who have relapsing multiple sclerosis have a greater risk. So older people with progressive MS may have a lower risk of rebound even if they come off the drug, though it can happen. If you had very aggressive disease prior to starting the drug, a high baseline relapse rate, let's say if you had four relapses in the year prior to starting Tysabri or Gelenia, you have a higher risk. Though some people, even if they had relatively mild disease, could have a very severe rebound relapse. That's one of the characteristics of rebound that often it's an attack more severe than anything someone has ever seen in their disease. The other thing is this so-called washout period. Historically, doctors used to advise patients, say after stopping Tysabri, to not take any disease-modifying therapy, maybe for six months, just because they were afraid of PML. They didn't want people to take multiple immunosuppressants at once. Now we know, generally speaking, this is a poor strategy and has caused a lot of people to have preventable relapses. I'll show some examples of rebound and their accompanying MRI scans. So this is someone who took Tysabri and had a rebound relapse, and you can see the MRI shows extensive gadolinium enhancing lesions each little bright dot here is an active multiple sclerosis plaque and you can see these extensive periventricular plaques this is a 24 year old man with relapsing MS who was stable on Tysabri for 10 years so he was doing very well on the drug and he changed to Abagio due to loss of insurance this wasn't an age 26 victim I don't know the exact reason for loss of insurance coverage afterwards he developed right-sided weakness, slurred speech, and ataxia, in other words, clumsiness of gait, two months after stopping the drug. He resumed Tysabri, but recovered incompletely. And you can see his MRI scans, the baseline scans on the right, and you can see he has lesions typical of multiple sclerosis. But after the rebound, he had a new lesion in the right pons and middle cerebellar peduncle and a new right periventricular lesion. This is a 31-year-old woman with MS who did not do well on interferons, beta seron, and avidex, and she got Gelenia in the TRANSFORMS trial. This is a randomized trial of Gelenia versus avidex. She was randomized to Gelenia. She stopped it because she wanted to get pregnant, and she developed ataxia, again, difficulty with walking, quadriparesis, weakness of all four extremities, and numbness five weeks after stopping the drug. You can see her baseline MRI April 2008, and in November 2008, during the rebound attack, she has these extensive edematous lesions. This is a 32-year-old woman who changed Gelenia daily to alternate day dosing. So normally, Gelenia is taken one tablet once a day, and she changed to every other day. Now, this is unusual because many physicians do recommend alternate day dosing Gelenia in some people to prevent very low levels of CD4 positive T cells and potential infections, including myself, and the half-life of Gelenia is seven days. This is a strategy used in some patients by some doctors, but in this particular instance, she developed cognitive decline, and you can see on her MRI scans, these are the old scans, and these are the new scans. She developed numerous new lesions. She had partial recovery after treatments with steroids, and then she was changed to Lemtrada. 
This is a 34-year-old male who got Tecfidera in the DEFINE trial. This is a randomized trial 2010 Tecfidera versus placebo in relapsing MS. But he stopped it because he wanted to start a family. And there were concerns about potential birth defects at the time. Although we believe Tecfidera may be unsafe in women attempting to conceive, it's perfectly safe for men to continue the drug, though this wasn't well known at the time. Interestingly, as an aside, the drug Abagio has been reported to get into rat semen in animal studies, so even for men attempting to conceive, it can be a potential problem. Anyway, he unfortunately did develop a rebound. This is rare with Tecfidera, but has been reported. An MRI scan of the spine, you're looking at sagittal images, showed numerous new lesions. There isn't a lot of data on rebound relapses and long-term recovery, but I did find this one observational study of 12 people who had a post tysabri rebound, and you can see a little information like the number of enhancing lesions they had prior to treatment, and the number of infusions they had prior to treatment interruption, and the number of days after stopping the treatment that they had the rebound. You can see 120 days, 128 days, but sometimes it can be shorter, 64 days, 56 days, around two months. That definitely can happen. And this is the number of GAD positive or enhancing lesions after therapy interruption. And you can see it can sometimes be a huge number, 31 enhancing lesions. That's a lot. And you can see the outcome. So many did recover and were stable, but others had incomplete recovery. In other words, some increase in neurological disability after the event, and some were stable and some were progressing even after the attack was treated. So what do you do if you have a rebound relapse? Well, the treatment is the same as any other multiple sclerosis relapse. So the first line treatment would be steroids, for instance, intravenous solumedrol or methylprednisolone. The dose in adults is often one gram daily for three to five days, sometimes with an oral steroid taper. You can take an equivalent dose of oral steroids, for instance, prednisone 1250 milligrams daily for three to five days. For people who have bad attacks that do not respond to steroids, one option is plasmapheresis or plasma exchange, which is a dialysis-like procedure that filters out antibodies and other inflammatory cytokines. For people with a very severe and disabling relapse, especially with numerous gadolinium enhancing lesions, one treatment I've had success with is the drug cytoxan or cyclophosphamide. This is a very toxic drug. It has a lot of potential side effects, but it can be very effective for very severe relapses. This is also used as a conditioning regimen in hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Now, of course, I think I've made the point clear that you, generally speaking, don't want to just stop disease-modifying therapy for no reason, but what if you have to change therapy because you're having side effects or you want to get pregnant or you're changing health insurance or some other reason? Well, one effective strategy, at least based on anecdotal experience and some observational studies, is using cell-depleting agents agents such as B cell depleting therapies. For instance, after stopping Tysabri or Gelenia, one thing is to not have a washout period and then to immediately start one of these B cell depleting drugs such as Ocrevus rituximab or Casimpta and presumably other cell depleting drugs like Lemtrada or Cladribine would also be very effective and I've generally speaking have good results with this strategy. If you have any questions, please post in the comments below and let me know if you have suggestions for future videos.